Hello, everybody. It's the Historical Gamer once again, and I apologize, guys. We're, what, six days into the new year, and I have been very intermittent with my content so far, and, um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, I was getting over a sickness. I'm feeling a lot better. I think you can hear that today, like in my last video, in my top five videos of 2023, I, I, as I listened to it, you could definitely hear I was still congested. I'm feeling great now, so hopefully things will get back on to sort of a more normal footing. Uh, today's video is going to be my top five most anticipated upcoming war games of 2024. So last video, we looked at what I enjoyed and was excited about last year. This video, we're going to talk about specifically the top five war games of 2024 that I'm excited about. Uh, games like manor lord might have made the list except it's a war game only list and so that's why we're not talking about that here today um but yeah these are my top five most anticipated war games of 2024 and let's go ahead and jump in at number five is icbm escalation this is the sequel to icbm uh this is going to be a real-time strategy war game uh, that is about global thermonuclear war. Uh, if you've ever played DEFCON back in the day, this is kind of kind of a spiritual successor to that type of game. I played a fair bit of ICBM, not a ton on the channel, a little bit, um, but I really enjoyed it. It was a fun game to play with friends. It's a multiplayer game. Basically, the idea behind ICBM is you are one of five or six different countries, uh, which are kind of like continents, uh, rather than specific nations. And then you your goal is to sort of build up your defenses, build up your forces, your stockpile, and then at some point you unleash a nuclear war. You can use things like conventional warfare to whittle down your enemies, slow down their buildup as well, uh, while you work your way toward you know building the, the nuclear arsenal that you desire. And when it's time... Uh, when one of the sides sort of unleashes nuclear war, then sort of it's all hands on deck and uh, each side begins throwing nukes at each other and you see who survives the most uh, or who dies the least, I guess. Now, Escalation is doing some interesting things. It's obviously it's a sequel to ICBM, uh, but Escalation is going to be adding new game modes. So they'll still have the standard standoff mode, which is kind of what I just was talking through. But they'll also have a conventional mode as well for like small scale conventional wars. Uh, they'll have a blitz mode, which is, I'm assuming, a more fast paced gameplay mode, which could be interesting for multiplayer. Uh, there's also going to be a co-op versus mode, which they kind of had before. You could do that playing a versus mode. Um, I'm really curious about the single player campaign, uh, which they, they said is going to be included in this. Um, that's definitely interesting. Um, and then additional support for, for skirmishes, uh, new technologies, new, more detail in the tech tree and the research tree, which played a big part of the previous game, more modding support. Um, and then also it, it says it supports up to 10 players, which I think is more than the previous game. I want to say the previous game was six or seven. So I'm really curious to see how this all plays out. I, the campaign especially kind of caught my eye because I didn't play a ton of ICBM unless I was playing with friends. Like it was a really nice multiplayer sort of chill in a Discord chat, talk with each, each, you know, each other and then stab folks in the back. Um, but I will say like these screenshots here, you know, I, it, it looks the same, but it definitely looks like there's enhancements, there's, there's upgrades and there's new stuff. So I'm really curious, you know, the ground combat, there's, you can see tanks fighting tanks. So there's like an ability to conquer ground, uh, which I kind of mentioned in the game mode earlier, which was like not something that the previous game had at all. Um, they had conventional units, but you couldn't like physically take land um, or anything like that. And there were some ground units like mobile tells and things like that, mobile launchers and things like that. But I, I don't really, I don't remember tanks being a thing. So I'm curious how that all plays and how it looks. It's definitely a game I'm interested in and I will be playing when it comes out. It's being made by Software Wear uh, and published by Slytherin, uh, the, the parent company of Matrix Games. So certainly looking forward to that. Don't have a lot else to say about that, but that's uh, my number five most anticipated war game of 2024. At number four on my list is Field of Glory Kingdoms. 
It's being developed by Ajod. It's going to be published by Slytherin. Again, the parent company of Matrix Games. And Field of Glory Kingdoms is similar to Field of Glory Empires, which came before it, in that it is a grand strategy game that takes place in the medieval age. Field of Glory Empires was sort of about the Roman Republic uh, and, uh, and that time period. Field of Glory Kingdoms is going to be about the Middle Ages. So it's set in 1054, right after the Great Schism, uh, and covers, I believe it says more than two centuries. So I'm assuming it goes into the, like almost to the 1300s uh, in European history. Uh, it takes place largely in Europe and then I think the near Middle East. And it is sort of a grand strategy game. Think like Total War in terms of the scope. Um, 375 different factions, 325 units, 600 buildings, 14 regions or heresies or 14 religions or heresies and 90 cultural traits, whatever that means. Uh, But this is effectively the grand strategy version of Field of Glory 2. So the reason I'm excited about this is Field of Glory 2 is sort of a tabletop war game, uh, which allows you to fight through battles either in the Roman era or in through the Middle Ages on a tabletop kind of war game setup. Field of Glory Empire said, hey, there's this battle engine. Let's go ahead and make a strategy game on top of that. And then we can, if you own Field of Glory 2, you can jump in and fight tactical battles. The tactical battles are way more detailed. They take way longer than anything that Total War has. So it's almost like the the strategy layer is something maybe more akin um, to, uh, I don't know, Knights of Honor Sovereign or something like that. Or uh, a really loose comparison would be something like Imperator or crusader kings like strategy games at that level that typically don't have really detailed tactical battles um although i think sovereign does i played that on the channel but you get my point like these are generally grand strategy games at the at the strategic level that don't usually bring you into the tactical battles except what they introduced with field of glory empires was the ability to open up Field of Glory 2 and use the tabletop war game to fight those battles out if you wanted. If you didn't want to, you could just simulate the battles. Field of Glory Empires had a lot of really interesting concepts. They had this concept of decadence, which sort of allowed for the decline and fall of empires. A lot of games like this, you know, when you have these sort of grand strategy games, they become map painters where it's just once you're on a roll, you hit a certain point where no AI country is going to pose a challenge to you, and you're just going to steamroll and take over the whole map. The concept of decadence was that as your empire gets bigger, as it lasts longer, it begins to sort of decay from the inside and can cause problems and and sort of place a check on your ability to expand further. I did not find Field of Glory Empire too compelling because I'm kind of done with the Roman era, the early Roman era anyway. I, I find the late Roman Empire interesting. But the early Roman sort of republic or, or early empire, a little bit less so. And so I didn't play that game a whole lot. It did a lot of really interesting things, but it just wasn't something that the era was super interesting to me, uh, which is why I'm excited about Field of Glory Kingdoms, because, you know, getting back to the game that we're talking about at hand, I'm really interested in sort of this medieval era. I'm really interested in a game that tries to say, okay, there's these other grand strategy games out there, you know, games like what Paradox makes or uh, or whatnot, um, that, that look at this strategic layer that allow you to do all these things and build your kingdoms up, but they normally don't have a tactical battle integration. And the fact that they're doing the same thing and in integrating with Field of Glory 2 so that you can fight those tactical battles is really compelling to me. Now, you don't have to do that. You don't have to fight the battles in Field of Glory 2. You can just simulate them on the strategic map like you would in most games like this. And if you do that, that's perfectly fine. It sounds like they're also trying to do something similar to what Empires did with Decadence. But instead of Decadence, they're having something called Authority and Disorder. So you sort of have a uh, the ability of your your kingdom or your empire, uh, your, your royal dominion uh, will have a certain amount of authority in it. Um, and uh, you can, you can lose authority over your vassals and lose control over your people, um, or you can strengthen it. 
Uh, so it's I'm, I'm assuming that's a similar type of mechanic. There is also apparently sort of a dynasty management aspect as well, uh, preparing for your succession by stringing an heir with your spouse or with other persons of your choice. Having an heir is by no means a guarantee to peaceful transition. So it sounds like they're trying to also have some internal dynamics where like your empire can be pulled apart, kind of the way the Byzantine Empire was always like in a civil war against itself over succession crises. So that that also sounds like an interesting piece that they're trying to do. But I'm just really excited about this game to see like how it plays, you know, how interesting it is. Uh, and I'm assuming it's coming out this year. They announced it a little while back. I, I haven't seen a date for it yet, but definitely a game I am very interested about. And it, uh, it makes my number four most anticipated war games of 2024. At number three on my list is Modern Naval Warfare by the Massilis Bros and published by Slytherin. I didn't realize this until after I had made my list, but four of the five games on this list are, are being published by Slytherin, which I guess makes sense when you consider that they are, you know, there's not a ton of publishers out there for sort of traditional war games. I think if this was broadened to appeal to more strategy games, it might be a little bit more diverse list. Uh, but in any event, uh, my, uh, my number three game on this list is uh, Modern Naval Warfare. Uh, and it is, you know, maybe this shouldn't even be on the list also because this is probably more of a simulator than it is a war game per se. Uh, but it looks like it is, it's very interesting. Basically, you it puts you in charge of a nuclear-powered attack submarine. I believe the initial version of the game is going to put you in charge of the Virginia class SSN. They're going to add more in the future. And it is basically a detailed simulation of naval combat in command of a nuclear powered attack submarine. Uh, the screenshots look interesting. I get vibes of dangerous waters, but actually the game that kind of comes to mind the most for me personally was Sierra's uh, fast attack which is a game I played a ton of and a lot of these screenshots of like the harpoon missiles or other things like that. It's like, wow, that looks like a cutscene straight out of, out of uh, fast attack. Um, but basically it is again, and the more I talk about this, it's a simulator. It's a game about war, <laughs> which is, it's always hard to like find war games on, uh, on steam because it's like one of those things where when you google like hey what are war games that are coming out this year when you're trying to do some research is there anything i missed and it's like well most folks who are making lists just include anything that is a game that includes conflict so whatever um but modern naval warfare looks like a really awesome simulator for a fast attack submarine uh, it is going to have highly detailed maps with highly detailed underwater and coastal environments so that's exciting uh, apparently has dynamic world with real life weather and traffic. Uh, so I think it'll be really cool to see how this game navigates civilian traffic for shipping. That was always a challenge in fast attack is making sure that when you put together your firing control, your fire control solution, you weren't loosing a, a, a harpoon out at, you know, a commercial ship when your target was nearby. I think that's one of those things that war games do have a really tough time with, like even cold waters, which kind of touch these grounds as well. I don't really remember there being much commercial shipping and maybe there wouldn't be once a, once a hot war really started, a lot of that shipping, at least for a time would stay, would stay in port probably. But in the early period of the conflict, there certainly would be commercial shipping that you've got to navigate around. Um, but yeah, uh, the game also will support co-op, which will be really cool. I think maybe that'll be kind of like Microprose's carrier deck where different players can man different stations and things like that. Um, like torpedoes and, uh, you know, you know, sonar stations and things like that. Apparently it'll also have a VR mode. I'm not, I'm not a big VR person, so okay. Um, but yeah, it'll be, it'll be very interesting to see how this works. I believe the initial map is going to be of the South Pacific, um, or, or I believe, is it the, is it the South China Sea? Maybe I'm not sure. Uh, but I know that this is something that I'm very interested in. I'm hopeful that it comes out soon. I, I feel like I've gotten burned at a lot of these naval games where it's like, this is my most anticipated for the next game. And then nothing happens for five months, for five months, for five years. Uh, but they've definitely been, you know, steadily releasing more information. They've been sort of making presentations at the Home of War Gamers event last fall. Uh, they've had sort of a, at least as of 
2022, they sort of released their first dev logbook, uh, which I only see two um, dating back to December of 2022. So it's been out there for a while. It's been uh, being worked on for a while. So hopefully we'll get some kind of early access version of this or something uh, this year. Um, But yeah, they're definitely working on it. And uh, very intermittently, we see a little bit more information leak out, but very much looking forward to modern naval warfare, uh, which is uh, the third game on my list. At number two on my list is Armored Brigade 2, developed by Veltica Studios, and I apologize if I'm mispronouncing that, and published once again by Slytherin. Uh, This is a real-time tactical war game, similar, I'd say, to, like, uh, I don't know if it's a great comparison, but close combat vibes with maybe a little bit more something like combat mission fidelity in terms of the simulation. Uh, But, like, the top-down view of the battlefield reminds me of close combat, while the more detailed nature of the actual conflict occurring reminds me a little bit more of combat mission or gravity team or something like that. Now we don't know a ton about armored brigade two yet. Uh, It was announced last year in September. So announced fairly recently, we do know that they're working on new waypoint systems. We know that they're working on um, a shift from a 2d environment to a 3d environment. Uh, There will be enhancements to the editing, uh, the editor, uh, improvements to spotting, enhanced infantry mechanics, which I think sounds interesting, enhanced fire support and air operations. So I'm really curious to see how this unfolds. I'm hopeful that this is a game that will come out this year. I have no real information about that. I'm assuming it comes out toward the tail end of the year if it does, but Armored Brigade 1 was a really enjoyable sort of hypothetical Cold War gone hot type game with a huge database of units that you could play a lot of. They had a lot of different campaigns. Um, And so it was a really enjoyable game that had a fair amount of DLCs. I always felt like the story in the campaign could have been done a little bit better. The the stock campaign battles were a little bit too sandboxy in my view. Like I am someone who wants to have some kind of narrative go with my games. But with the later DLCs on like Prague Spring hypothetically going hot, like that one was way better done from a story perspective to really make you feel like you understood what was going on in the world. And I really enjoyed that. I'm really excited to see what they do with moving this game from 2D to 3D. There wasn't like you saw outlines of tanks in the 2D version, but it was very bare bones graphics. It was it wasn't NATO counters, but it wasn't far removed from that. Um, But it's not like you're moving around brigades, you know, with each chit, right? A chit represented a single tank um, and and, and you could move them around uh, individually, uh, but it or or a platoon of them. But it was definitely a game that I think from a combat fidelity perspective was very well done. We've played we played it on the channel a while back. And for them to move it to 3D, like some of the very early screenshots here that they shared in the in the dev diary or whatnot, um, I think look pretty darn cool. They've done two dev diaries already. The first was sort of about like, hey, why are we shifting from 2D to 3D? Um, And I think it looks great. And then the second one was about like the spotting system. So in the previous game, basically like once a unit was spotted, you everybody knew where it was. Every unit knew, hey, there's an enemy tank. Here it is. They couldn't engage it necessarily unless they could see it or something like that. But it was effectively like the fog of war was very limited once a unit was detected by any of your units. And so that kind of had an unrealistic impact on the way that the battlefield worked, right? You knew where something was once one person saw it. Um, And now with this new system, they're trying to implement something more akin to the way it really works, where it's like, hey, one unit saw it. It takes a while for that to feed up to the chain of command so people know what's going on. It takes a while for units not there to like respond to something like that. I'm hoping that maybe it has something similar to kind of the the delays in the way that orders work in Flashpoint. Armored Brigade already has some order delays built in based on things, but the idea of enhancing the spotting mechanics, I think are going to lead to a much more authentic feeling battlefield. 
I really hope they pour a lot of work into the campaigns to kind of make it feel like a real a real world rather than just some equipment fighting each other. I think the enhancements to infantry combat are badly needed. The previous game really kind of felt like, all right, it's tanks fighting with each other, and yeah, there's infantry units, and maybe they've got missiles, and maybe that matters. But it never felt like when you play combat mission, the newer stuff like Shock Force or whatever, when you play combat mission, it's like it felt like an infantry game that has armored units. When you played Armored Brigade, it felt like an armored game that has infantry units. I'm hoping this game with the enhancements to the infantry really does say like it makes you feel like, all right, this is really a combined arms game. But either way, I'm really excited to see what comes of this. Uh, I, I don't have a lot else to share other than to say, like, I really enjoyed Armored Brigade 1 and Armored Brigade 2 is a game that I will probably play an absolute ton of when it does come out. Links in the description if you're interested in checking out those dev diaries. Definitely worth checking out, in my opinion, and something I'm really excited about uh, for for this year. All right, before we get into my most anticipated game of 2024, First thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about some sort of honorable mention games uh, because there are some games that I've either covered before or aren't really new games but are re-releasing that I do want to talk about a little bit because I do think they will highlight this year if they come out. The first game is Sea Power, uh, Naval Combat in the Missile Era. Uh, this is a game that's being worked on by Microprose. Uh, it's sort of the, the successor to uh, the uh, Cold Waters games is making sea power so this is like i said it's being published by microprose it's being made by terrasic games which is uh one of the individuals who worked on uh, at killer fish on uh, cold waters this is a kind of like fleet command like jane's fleet command but like a modern reinterpretation of this game i have covered this on the channel before it hasn't been in my top five lists in the past uh and so that's why it's not on the list this year i don't want to like each year put the same stuff on the list until it comes out um, you know, I don't know how close it is to coming out. I have a very limited sense of where it might be. I honestly don't really know, but I'm just, I, I'm, I'm getting like when I've been talking to Wolfpack or others who I kind of do my podcast with, it's like, it's kind of like, okay, we think, we think maybe this will be the year that we see something, you know, they've constantly released new footage, new screenshots, you know, they've made, they've, they've posted dev diaries and things like that. Um, and so my hope is that this is a game that we will see, um, you know, that we see come out this year. We will see, uh, obviously, if that is the case, uh, but it has definitely been something that has been in the works for quite some time. And, uh, you know, we're, we're hopeful that, uh, that it'll come out this year. And I think the dev has given some indication that, you know, they're targeting this year in some of the forums and discords, but I, I can't confirm or deny that. But that's definitely an honorable mention type game uh, on this list because it would be on the list probably at number one if I hadn't already talked about this and we hadn't done interviews with the devs and things like that for the podcast. So uh, that is Sea Power Naval Combat in the Missile Age. Uh, and uh, that's some screenshots you can see that they've released on the Steam page here. Uh, for this game so definitely looking forward to that uh, and uh, hopefully we get to see it this year I could add a handful of other microprose games to the list of most anticipated task force admiral would probably up there I don't know if task force admiral is going to be coming out this year I feel like and this is just a gut feel like I haven't the devs haven't told me this but I feel like sea power is probably further along than task force admiral I know task force admiral released like a demo version that folks could see last year to sort of uh, promote it on some of the channels. I got access to it, but I, I had a lot of stuff going on and, and family wise, and I didn't end up getting it out. And I didn't end up getting to the, the content, which I was very gracefully uh, provided, but I didn't end up getting to it till everybody had already made their videos. And I was kind of like, all right, well, seems like, you know, if, if folks are interested, it's already out there. So Task Force Admiral, another game that I that I, that I could put on the list for, for honorable mention. I My gut tells me it's not coming out this year, but, you know, who knows? I know Admiral the Dev is, uh, is often in the chat, so maybe he'll tell me in the chat that I'm wrong and that it's coming out this year. If I thought it was coming out this year, it would also be on my honorable mention list. The other game I want to talk about on the honorable mention list is Scourge of War Remastered. 
Um, this is a game that was originally published by Slytherin uh, and made by Norbsoft Dev. Uh, it was pulled from the Slytherin store last year. Uh, there wasn't a lot of explanation on what was going on there, um, but it has reappeared on Steam as Scourge of War Remastered uh, and uh, listed as coming soon. It doesn't say a lot about what is going to be changed. Obviously, the graphics are considerable, considerably better. Um, it does say the minimum specs for the game are having a 64-bit operating system. And on the forums for the game's website, Norb did mention uh, they're working on SOWX64. Uh, so I am assuming that means they're re-architecting the game to 64-bit as opposed to 32-bit. Um, that's an assumption. I was involved in Scourge of War Waterloo as a tester. I did a little bit of artwork on the, the campaign map and, and a few other, some marketing stuff before they moved over to publish with, uh, with uh, Slytherin. Um, I started kind of back around Brandy Station time. But this is a, a real-time tactical war game. I'm not involved in this version of the game, so I don't have a lot of information um, about what is going to be, what is all going to be done. But definitely the screenshots look much better, so I'm assuming they're upgrading the art. Still looks like sprite-based art based on the screenshots, so we'll see what all comes from that. Uh, but definitely looking like they're upgrading that. Um, Norb also mentioned, someone asked, you know, are you going to do a, a Scourge of War Gettysburg remaster later? Because Scourge of War Gettysburg was the original game in the series, which never actually came to Steam. Uh, and Norb said, you know, absolutely, we're working on making all of the main we're working to make the main EXE or main executable, um, that's sort of the file that runs the game, able to run all the battles and DLCs. So it sounds like Scourge of War Remastered will be a game that will support all of the Scourge of War games. Um, you know, I'm assuming it'll be via like DLC or other things like that. Like it won't all come into one packaged price. Uh, they did mention if you currently own the game, it would require repurchasing which frankly kind of makes sense given that the previous game was published by, by Slytherin and, and the new games are not. Um, so I would assume Slytherin's not going to give them keys to the new game, right? Like I, I, I anyway, I, I don't know the, I don't know the ins and outs of all of that, but makes sense to me anyway. Um, but yeah, uh, looks like they're looking at enhancing Scourge of War. Uh, this is in my opinion, one of the best. And obviously I've told you I was involved in, in the later versions of it. But in my opinion, one of the best real-time tactical combat games ever. Uh, the scale is kind of unmatched, except for maybe less no, gr 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 grognards. I, I always forget how to pronounce that. But there's a there's another uh, Napoleonic game out there, like Hist War. That's what I was thinking of. Hist War Napoleon um, and Hist War Les Grognards, uh, which came out in 2001 and then later 2009, um, which is I think still for sale through their website, but it's not on steam anywhere. Like other than that game, I think scourge of war is the only game out there that has anything similar to this level of scale in combat. So I'm really excited for it. Um, obviously I've got a bit of a, a bit of a bias cause I was involved in it a little bit, but um, yeah, definitely looking forward to the remaster of scourge of war to see what they do and how it looks. The, the handful of screens they've uploaded to steam look, you know, pretty damn awesome um, compared to compared to what what it used to look like. OK, so without further ado, let's jump into my number one war game uh, or most anticipated war game of 2021. And that is B-17, the Mighty Eighth Redux, which is the remake uh, that Microprose is making of B-17, the Mighty Eighth. Now, you might say, hey, two of the games on your list aren't really war games. And for one of those, I might agree. But for B-17 The Mighty Eighth, this is not like your typical flight sim. So if you missed, if you didn't play this game, uh, the original B-17 The Mighty Eighth came out in the early 2000s. It was a game that allowed you to fly the B-17 and a fairly high fidelity flight simulator. Uh, it's kind of a classic all-time war game. Uh, the game allowed you to fly missions with fairly small bomber flights, whatever, like the actual plane. There weren't as many planes as you would expect, right? Like B-17s, you had thousands of bombers in some cases toward the end of the war on a single mission. Certainly in 44, late 43, you should have several hundred 
Um, but this game was like, hey, how's 24 planes sound? And really it's 12 planes with any crews that you know anything about and then like a mere wing of 12 more. And then you could also jump in and play the interceptors on the German side in the middle of a mission or jump in and play the uh, the, the escort pilots as well. Uh, but basically it was a flight sim over Europe uh, that allowed you to play through the the bomber offensive from the B-17, the Mighty Eighth's point of view, flying the B-17. Um, and you could you could play in any one of the crew members' positions, right? You could play as a waste gunner, as a ball turret gunner, and you could jump around in the plane and do that. Now, they had a, a, a version of the game where you were just flying as one crew. So you basically, you'd try and fly through one tour of duty with a crew, and you'd do that. And that's kind of more of a flight sim. But where the war game elements come in is when you actually jump in and say, I'm going to be a squadron commander because that was an option as well. And then in that case, you had to pick the planes for the mission from your squadron. You had to manage the crews within that squadron. You had to choose the bomb loadouts for the for the mission. You had to pick the target that you were going to fly. Um, and you had to do reconnaissance on targets as well to make sure that like you knew what was going on there, you know, how much flack there was, how much damage was done by previous raids. Like it was much more a strategy game with flight simulator elements, but it wasn't just, Hey, this is a flight sim. These are the missions you fly. You were controlling the squadron, right? Like if one of your squadrons had your best bombardier, you're better, you best put them as a lead in the squadron so that they're the ones dropping because all the other bombers in the squadron drop on them basically and so if your your lead bomber has a good bombardier you're going to do more damage to the target uh you had to manage the aircraft themselves right like aircraft take damage in missions so you take a bunch of damage in one mission you're going to fly the next that aircraft might not be in great mechanical condition you can choose to fly it and have it go out there and still you know fly a mission but it may not survive, or maybe you give them a break. You know, the crew's morale can go up and down and things like that. So this is definitely a game I'm very excited about. I'm a little bit concerned that, you know, the the, the, the Microprose games, guys, I, I love I love what Microprose has tried to do. I feel like they're a little bit over their skis on some of this stuff because they have announced a lot of games, and they have released a few games but it seems like any of the really hyped up stuff that they're doing like b17 the bloody hundredth which is going to be so b17 the mighty eighth redux is a remake of the previous game that's what's supposed to be coming out first b17 the bloody hundredth is basically hey we really like b17 the mighty eighth but we're actually going to make a sequel type deal with a lot of new enhancements and improvements and things like that like redux is limited to some extent it's a remake of the previous game bloody hundredth is a new game um so like they've got they've announced a lot of these games and they've been announced for years and there hasn't been a lot of progress toward releasing a lot of these games and so i have begun to get a little bit i don't know concerned about the quantity of games they've announced and then how early they're announcing games relative to when they come out um I think that's kind of the kindest way I can put it. Again, hyper optimistic about the stuff they're announcing, but you got to deliver. And it, it kind of gets to the point where it's like, you got to deliver. Now, B-17, the Mighty Eighth, the remake, was supposed to be coming out before the end of the year last year. Um, it obviously hasn't come out yet. They are releasing dev diaries, so there is progress. They've released four dev diaries. The most recent was just on the 13th of December, I believe they are targeting a Q1 release. Um, I think, but yeah, I, I don't, I don't know officially when this will come out. Um, I would have sworn if they could, they would have released like an early access version of it to go in conjunction with, um, the, the, uh, the, oh my goodness, the new, Tom Hanks, Steven Spielberg, Band of Brothers in the Sky, Masters of the Air. Um, I would have thought if they could have done that, they they would have, you know, released this by then. Um, they're obviously, they, I believe they also did announce, like, they're going to try 
to have early, you know, they're going to try to have larger missions. I don't know if they've ever confirmed anything like more than 24 bombers in the sky. Um, according to the most recent dev diary, which was on December 13th, uh, they've, they're delaying the release until January of 2024. So theoretically this month, um, but we will see. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm, you know, I'm excited to see what comes of this and, uh, I'm definitely looking forward to this. I'm a little nervous, but we'll see. I mean, it's supposed to come out this month. So even if they delay it like next month, maybe, um, certainly this year. Right. Uh, but that's, you know, because of those elements of strategy of planning your missions, like the squadron commander elements, that was always the part of the game I enjoyed the most. There's something pretty sweet about turning your B-17 on and hearing those engines spool up and the, the igniter, that sort of high pitched whine or whatnot. But, uh, but in any event, B-17, the mighty eighth redux, my most anticipated war game, um, so it's the same experience of the original game. With the original engine upgraded to support functionality present in Direct X twelve, um, and then yeah, so it doesn't really provide a lot of the features on the on this on the actual page, but we'll see. <laughs> They've I've shared some screenshots that are in their dev diaries here, so um, hopefully it's good. Anyway, guys, I don't have anything else to share. This is my most anticipated list of games for twenty twenty four of war games for twenty twenty four. We might do a most anticipated list for strategy games. I'm also thinking about doing a top five list for um, early games that are currently in early access that I'm really excited about, but they're in early access. You know, things that you've seen a lot of on the channel, like Ultimate General American Revolution. But this isn't going to just become a top five channel either. Uh, we will get back to Ultimate General American Revolution hopefully next week. Um, I've got some stuff going on this weekend, but... My, my plan is to get back into that game. I believe there's going to be a major update that may lengthen the campaign as well into Virginia, I think. Um, so, or not Virginia, New York, I think, is what's next. Um, or maybe, you know, I know they're also working on a British campaign as well. So I'm definitely going to be coming back to Ultimate General American Revolution. I'm going to be doing more um, Grand Tactician Whiskey and Lemons as well. And then I do also want to do a new series on the Great War Western Front, a little bit more polished, a little bit more edited, um, maybe a little bit of RP mixed in, um, but we will see. Uh, so those are kind of things that are coming up on the channel soon. And then I did also get a key for Boat Crew, which is a PT boat uh, type game published by Microperos. The dev sent me a key, um, so I did want to go ahead and check that out as well. Uh, but those are some things I'm thinking about about the future. Uh, without further ado, though, I think that's going to wrap up today's video. Hope you guys did enjoy. Let me know your thoughts of games you're looking forward to this year. And until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.